A little bit self-lacerating, so to speak, in that he said he's sick of these kinds of fights, and he wants an emphatic knockout over Milos here tonight. Round one, scheduled for 10. Yoki did say that tactically, this may be the most complex opponent of his career thus far. If you're looking to put fighters in kind of stylistic archetypes so far, when Milos is in the flow and as a southpaw, he kind of has a cadence that's similar to someone like a Corey Sanders in how he sort of slings his punches loosely from that southpaw stance. Guys like Francesco Pianetta and Kevin Johnson, who he did manage to stop, spent most of his time here in the early going orthodox. Yoka coming off a 12th round TKO win over Joel Tamboy Jaco. Typically likes to start his camps in Mendaz in Switzerland, just focusing on his fitness. Usually he and his wife Estelle will get their fitness in order before they head to camp. Yoka feels particularly prepared for this one. Said he wanted other sparring partners, but Due to the pandemic, he wasn't able to get a couple of partners that he wanted from Ukraine. And there's a good body shot for Milas. Oh, he's not afraid to let his hands posture, a rel relaxed operator in there. Here from Yoka as he stocks a mover, Milas, around the ring here in round one. Honoring of the late French film legend, Jean-Paul Belmondo, who's a close friend of Tony Yoka, is a big fight fan, a big supporter of the French boxing scene, and actually attended every one of Yoka's fights prior to the pandemic. So Yoka dedicating this performance. Right hand there for Milas. Heard the instructions from Virgil Hunter telling Yoka, don't, don't just follow him around the ring. Step in with a jab like that. Give him something to think about as he's circling around. Each with your jab. In close, he likes to flurry, and get back to the outside. Likes to work around the perimeter of walking Joel Jaco down in his most recent fight. Jaco, another fighter who... Right hand from Yoka comes behind it with a jab. That's something that Virgil Hunter instilled in Andre Ward for Ward, who is one of Yoka's favorite fighters and his trainer when he entered the pro ranks as he comes over the top of the right hand. Good body work from Yoka right at the bell. Well, a much better round for Tony Yoka in round two, but you'd still have to say that Milos is giving Yoka more to think about than most of his previous opponents. You know, Christian Hammer certainly made Yoka uncomfortable in kind of a you know, mauling veteran kind of way. But Milos has been able to connect on some shots from range. And maybe based on activity alone, took that opening round. But Yoka certainly stepped it up there in round two. Earlier this week, Milos said it, it never occurred to him that he would fight in a place like this. He also said that even losing would not be a tragedy if I boxed well and left a good impression. By his own admission, a, a very reserved man who doesn't like talking to the media, so maybe he's a little unfamiliar with the expected boxing braggadocio. He made this point earlier on in the broadcast in his pro career, not a veteran who's kind of taken some losses at the world level, but a fellow undefeated fighter, but who has the same aspirations at this point in his career. Luka finally gets Milos along the ropes. The referee will 
correctly ruled that was a little bit of a push. The body shot from Yoko, who comes over the top of the right hand. They banter back and forth in the center of the ring. Hard for these fighters not to get a little bit excited in this kind of atmosphere. The noise travels well here in the tennis stadium as they volley shots back and forth. Round four begins here in our main event. Tony Yoka, Peter Milas. Corey Erdman here calling the action for you. Yoka with his trainer Virgil Hunter focused primarily on speed in this camp. Yoka said the amount of cardio that he was doing and a little bit of a, a speedy heavyweight here in Milas who's doing a lot of moving. An interview with Lewis Watson, that bad left hook earlier this year, that he believes he's the most complete heavyweight in the world today. And, and But what definitely is true right now is that Milos is being forced to work a little harder than Yoka is to do the things he wants to do. Whereas Yoka, with his range and his size, has been able to keep a, a fairly comfortable tempo. Milos Keeping Yoka occupied with those combinations as Yoka goes back downstairs. This is some good work to the body in round keeps three. Keeps it up here in the fourth. The jab to the body there from Yoka as flurries off the ropes, spins out to the center of the ring. But Yoka said that he did think that this would be a tactically complex fight for him. Much time in these rounds, but when he does, round five underway, obviously the crowd heavily in favor of Tony Yoka. As he and his manager told the Daily Mail earlier this week, he's Yoka starts that combination off with body work once again. Hard right hand in the body from Yoka. You heard Virgil Hunter in the corner saying, herd him into your right hand with your left. Which usually means not just jabbing, but almost a, a throwaway left hook. And there's that right hand downstairs, right along the belt line. And Yoka lands another one flush up top. Milas not able to evade Yoka quite as often here in this round. Being forced to absorb some shots along the ropes. And the offense here in the fifth has been all Yoka prior to that left hook there for Milas. Flurry to the body. Milas replies with one of his own. Yoka believes the heavier shots are coming from him, so if Milos is willing to trade with him. Round six underway, and you heard Virgil Hunter really likes that body work from Yoka, and that's exactly how he starts this round, with a right hand to the body. And there seems to be a, a little bit of a mean streak from Yoka, a little more zip on those shots, particularly to the body. And you can't help but wonder if that's tied to how he's been feeling he's coming into this fight. His promoter and his manager have had to calm him down because he's getting a little bit impatient in terms of getting those fights against top 15 heavyweights. Every performance, every round that ticks by is a, a referendum on his skill level and his career. And he wants an emphatic performance here tonight. Milas offering his jab a little bit more here in the sixth. He needs to give Yoka a, a reason to give him space. 
Yoka more and more, particularly in that fifth, would suggest the body shots. Might have been the first clinch of this fight. Sneaky right hand there from Milos. Particularly over the last three to four rounds. So those body shots are becoming more and more frequent. There's one from long range. As Milos backs against the ropes. Yoka catching a lot of Milos' work on the gloves, on the elbows, as Milos displays his own elbow and says, I caught that right hand. Milos really looking to spoil this round. A lot more movement. So I'm hold on there once again. Focusing on his defense, and he gets clipped with a big left hook. Milos is in trouble, and he goes down. Half a minute left to go here in the seventh round as the count is up to six. And Milos taking his time, getting back up to a vertical base. Can Yoka close the show here? 15 seconds remain in the seventh. A flurry to the body. You saw the knees buckle once again, and Milos goes down. He slumps into his own corner. And that is it. Milos took a seat in his corner, but there was no stool. Tony Yoka with the knockout victory. a textbook performance in terms of how to break down a mover. Tony.